नमस्ते सभी दर्शकों को और आज हमारे साथ पूर्व विदेश सचिव श्री कमल सिब्बल जी हैं और हम उनसे बात करेंगे द चेंजिंग वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर के बारे में आपका स्वागत है सिब्बल साहब नमस्ते आपको थैंक यू वेरी मच टू बिगिन विद मैं आपसे ये पूछना चाहूंगा कि ये जो इस समय युद्ध चल रहा है रूस और यूक्रेन के बीच में तो यदि इसका कोई एक दोषी यदि हम ढूंढना चाहें हमें पता है बिकॉज इन सच सिचुएशन देर आर मल्टीपल कॉजेस लेकिन यदि किसी एक दोषी को ढूंढना हो तो वह कौन होगा देखिए क्वाइट क्लियरली यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका क्योंकि यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका कंट्रोल नेटो and the prime cause is the relentless expansion of nato i know this from uh, my own experience as ambassador to russia and i was ambassador then in 2007 when uh, putin at the munich security conference very openly stated his concerns and uh, opposed this extension of nato spelled out his security concerns and actually asked the question why are you doing it uske baad uh teen ya char expansions hui hai nato ki uske baad bhi in stages matlab ke whatever the russian concerns were totally disregarded aur obama ne to itni behudi tarike se putin ke sath vyavhar kiya it is shocking <laughs> at one stage uh he said that uh, there are three problems that united states faces terrorism ebola virus and russia i i mean this is the kind of language we are using and called uh, russia a regional power and it doesn't produce anything that any wants any country wants to buy so this kind of humiliation and degradation Uh, of uh, the head of state of uh, what was once a super power uh, i think was uh, uh, simply not uh, uh, acceptable from the diplomatic point of view ab phir biden ne kya kiya that uh, putin is a killer you don't talk like that uh, to the head of a state acha jab 2008 mein this is after putin warned them the munich security conference bhai ye nato ki aap jo extension kar rahe hain ye mere liye unacceptable hai to 2008 mein inhone ghoshna kar di that both uh, both uh, georgia and ukraine uh, will will uh, have nato membership this was said in bucharest at the nato summit in romania uh as a result of that uh, shakashvili who was president <coughs> of ukraine uh, got a bit excited uh, and, uh, <coughs> and and confronted uh, russia as a result of which he lost two separatist republics of abkhazia and of south ossetia this red line was not heeded by united states of america or 2014 mein jo president yanukovych the who was actually elected in a legitimate election ji yeah. uh, was overthrown by street protest because ye chal raha tha color revolutions and all that which later became the arab spring also uh, oh, yeah. so so the, the the exactly actually victoria newland who's today the under secretary of state in the state department the third position mm-hmm. she was assistant secretary of state and you can see videos even today where she is going to the maidan protesters and distributing cookies to them her grandfather was a ukrainian jew and her father is is a, is a ukrainian jew of course and uh, and there was a conversation which is recorded which is freely available between her and uh, jeff pyatt who was the minister political in the us embassy here and that became ambassador to ukraine where they were discussing who should be the prime minister and they men- and mentioned yatsun sok whom i happened to meet actually when i went to ukraine uh, some years ago and when uh, pyat said they shouldn't we consult the european union and she said it's on record f the european union 
So this was the degree of this was the degree of involvement of these people in what was happening. Now, as a result of that, Putin went and annexed Crimea because he saw the writing on the wall that this NATO expansion is going to continue. They are now going to have a government, pliable government, pro Western government installed through a coup d'état. So he annexed uh, Ukraine, uh, Crimea. At the same time, there was you know, this tensions between Western Ukraine and Eastern Ukraine, historical tensions because Western Ukraine uh, was actually large parts of it were not part of uh, Tsarist Russia. They were actually annexed from Poland and uh, Lithuania and all that and, and uh, Czech and Hungary by Stalin. So they are Catholics. They are uh, originally uh, Poles and Lithuanians, etc., etc. So they are very different ethnically and linguistically uh, from the Eastern Ukrainians, who are Russian ethnic, uh, ethnically Russian and Russian speaking. And this has been a huge problem. And the right-wing governments in Ukraine have tried to suppress the identity and the language of the Eastern Ukrainians, which forced Russia uh, to intervene. And then in 2015, after uh, this coup d'etat occurred, in fact, 2014, then these two republics declared their independence. Russia didn't recognize those, the indip their independence until now. So there has been a simmering conflict that has been going on uh, for years and years. Uh, so this is the background. Now, it is a fact that uh, there have been tensions between uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine. After all, Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union. It was not only a part of the Soviet Union, it was a critical and, uh, in, and how should I say, um, an organic part of the Soviet Union because the origin of the Russian state as such uh, began in Kievan Rus, which is today's Kiev. Uh, so, and they're, they're, the Orthodox Church, they are, they are very close religious connections. Uh, and for the Russians, uh, the Ukrainians are part of uh, them. Uh, there are so many Ukrainians, Russians who are married to Ukrainians, so many Ukrainians uh, who are in very large numbers who still are in Russia. I may tell you, for example, when uh, I was involved in negotiating the Kudan Kulam uh, power project with the Russians, the head of the Russian atomic energy, Kiryenko, who had earlier been prime minister, is a Ukrainian. Uh, and then there are lots of uh, family members, this and that, of uh, Russians who are living in Russia, uh, who are there in Ukraine. So it's a kind of a civil war also. There is that dimension. And there have been tensions between them how to uh, organize the relationship as two independent uh, separate states. And here, I'd like to give you, give you the example of India and Pakistan, though it's not totally analogous, but I think you can understand <laughs> or your listeners can understand a little bit uh, what the issues are. Pakistan gets separated. Pakistan has an identity issue. So it asserts its identity as much as possible. It has a sense of weakness. Uh, it has security, a sense of insecurity vis-a-vis -vis such a large neighbor. So it seeks foreign partnerships, foreign uh, alliances, so reach, reaches out to the United States, becomes a member of CENTO. And just as in uh, Ukraine, there are, there are uh, new Nazi type of far uh, right extremist groups. In, in their, version, their version in Pakistan are the jihadis and the extremist Islamists and all who identify their difference with India on the basis of religion, even yeah. now very deeply. So right. it is this kind of a parallel, except with the difference that unlike uh, the bigger country occupying a smaller country's uh, territory, it is Pakistan who is occupying a part of our territory in Jammu and Kashmir. So, so that analogy doesn't work. <laughs> yes, yes, but then there is some sort of this as, as, as far as this identity business is concerned. Uh, yeah. Talking about this uh, Pax Americana, that is the general domination of uh, uh, America in the world post Second World War. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, you remember uh, Francis Fukuyama wrote a book called End of History. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to him, now there was only going to be one pole 
And if that were the case, and if NATO was a grouping to take care of the Second World War, why was NATO even continued post the dissolution of the Soviet Union? You see, Russia looms very large, very large in the minds of the United States because of the Cold War. Their entire superstructure of think tanks and columnists and uh, uh, what might you experts in in general, uh, bureaucrats, uh, negotiators uh, who move in and out uh, from government to the private sector and all that. They have been bred for decades on seeing Russia as the principal enemy. Uh, so even when the Cold War ended, I don't think that they had a change change in their thinking. There was a change of thinking on the Russian side. <laughs> Poor Gorbachev, he wanted uh, to uh, reach out and have a uh, proper agreement with the West where the security of each, each, each side would be respected, where he, Russia will become part of a larger security architecture, something which Yeltsin pursued. Uh, and in fact, wanted to become member of NATO, saying that since the Warsaw Pact has been disbanded, and Russia is European, and there is now no threat of communism and uh, and the Soviet threat. So let's all get together and have a common European home with common uh, shared security. But uh, the United States saw that as a huge problem because they saw motives in it from their point of view that what Russia really wanted was the elimination of U.S. presence in Europe and control over Europe. Because if there is total reconciliation uh, between Russia and uh, Europe, and even on the security side, <laughs> Russia becomes part of the European security architecture, then what does the Russia, uh, US do? They lose all control over Europe, <laughs> which, 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 they, which even today is a problem for them. Because uh, the transatlantic unity and uh, their capacity to, after all, you know, Europe, you can't, it doesn't seem to be a strong military power, but it's a very important component of the international system. You have now 27, earlier 28 countries in the European Union. It is a population which is double the United States. It has an economy which together uh, is almost as large as that of the United States. They have created institutions like the euro and other things to compete with the dollar. They have huge amounts of technology. Their defense firms compete with those like the French ones that compete very bitterly against the American defense firms. So, uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a booming uh, market. Uh, so, therefore, United States doesn't want to lose control over it. And any thought which France uh, proposes from time to time that Europe must have strategic autonomy. They don't want that. So strategic autonomy means they're no longer dependent on Europe. So to answer your question, so they thought that Russia is very weak. Russia uh, is disoriented, is in disarray. So this is the that geopolitically they are so much hurt. So they are Europe from Europe, they are isolated. And NATO ko expand karte rahe, karte rahe, right to their borders in tandem the European Union be expand karta rahe. therefore economic and security barrier is created against uh, Russia and Russia is excluded from Europe and permanently weakened geopolitically Sari neighboring states have become parts of <laughs> NATO they are, they are surrounded their last bastion is uh, of defense is Georgia and Ukraine so Tabin Putin ne piche kaha ke bhai I can't retreat anymore. Aapne jo kiya kiya, but I have no place to retreat back to. <laughs> Therefore, I have to now do something. So, uh, hai karan, uh, why NATO has survived, despite the fact that uh, as Fukuyama stupidly <laughs> claimed that it was the end of history. Jinko history ki itni akal nahi hai, 300 ka to existence hai, unki, unko kya akal hai history ki. So, keh diya, koi history has ended. <laughs> इसमें यह भी देखने वाली बात है कि जब 2014 में इन्होंने वो कू देता किया यूक्रेन में और यानुकोविच को वहां से रवाना कराया 
उसके तुरंत बाद जब क्राइमिया पर कब्जा किया रूस ने पुतिन ने तो नेटो से अमेरिका से यूरोप से कहीं से भी देर वॉज नो सॉलिड रिस्पॉन्स तो तो ये पूरा का पूरा जो सिस्टम इनका पैक्स अमेरिकाना का था मुझे लगता है क्या वो 2014 क्राइमिया के एनेक्सेशन से ही खत्म होना नहीं शुरू हो गया था नहीं ऐसा है कि क्राइमिया में जनरल एक्सेप्टेंस है कि क्राइमिया हिस्टोरिकली हमेशा रशिया का ही हिस्सा रहा और 1954 में टू सेलिब्रेट दी थ्री हंड्रेड एनिवर्सरी ऑफ द ट्रीटी बिटवीन एंड कॉसक्स उन्होंने क्रूसॉफ जो यूक्रेनियन था उन्होंने क्राइमिया को यूक्रेन में ट्रांसफर कर दिया जैसे हमने रिओर्गेनाइजेशन ऑफ स्टेट्स इन इंडिया की इट वाज वन कंट्री नो वरी थॉट इज गोइंग टू ब्रेक अप सो एंड एंड द सोवियत यूनियन वाज एट द हाइट ऑफ इज पावर ऑलमोस्ट तो इसलिए द रिटर्न ऑफ क्राइमिया टू रशिया Uh, may have seemed like an annexation and uh, violating the sovereignty of a country but there are serious historical reasons uh, why uh, russia could justify this especially as everybody accepts that uh, the population is uh, russian speaking uh, identifies itself as russian and referendum bhi hua wo genuine referendum tha aisi baat nahi aur jo argument russia ki thi wo valid bhi hai ki aapne serbia ko kaat diya कोसोवो को इंडिपेंडेंट कर दिया डिस्पाइट यूनियन सिक्योरिटी रेजोल्यूशन अगेंस्ट इट तो आपने कहा कि नहीं रोज पीपल हैव एड अ रेफरेंडम एंड दे वांट टू बी सेपरेट एंड दे यूएस रेकग्नाइज दे सोवरेन थी तो ये खुद गलतियां करते हैं प्रेसिडेंट सेट करते हैं और जब कोई और फिर प्रेसिडेंट के ऊपर एक्ट करे फिर कहते हैं कि नहीं नहीं जी आपने तो इंटरनेशनल लॉ को वायलेट कर दिया सॉवरेंटी को वायलेट कर दिया अच्छा दूसरी आर्ग्यूमेंट अभी दे रहे हैं कि भाई first time in the history of europe uh, country sovereignty is being violated the country has been is uh, is uh, territorial integrity has been violated are yugoslavia mein kya hua tha <laughs> they exactly. broke up that country in so many states and made all of them uh, barring serbia member of nato and they had 79 days of bombing and i saw figures in, in some of my tweets i've quoted them about how many civilians were killed and how much infrastructure was destroyed and how many serbian security forces were killed to isliye uh, acha to answer your question in in a little more uh, detail not detail but uh, give another angle to it pax americana began uh, to be weakened diluted with the rise of china ye khud hi unhone china ko itna bada monster bana diya because of uh, the wall street and uh, the greed of the multinational to have a cheap labor uh which china provided in large numbers and created capacities of scale for production which uh, these countries can't match and uh, and all these cheap goods were being uh, being exported to the united states even today if you look at despite everything their total their bilateral trade is 670 billion dollars Uh, so it helps control the inflation in the united states american companies make huge uh, profits from this wall street makes huge profits uh, uh, from the uh, financially from uh, china so jab china after 2012 when xi jinping uh, came to power and announced the belt and road initiative uh, and then started flexing his muscles that was the beginning of uh, in a sense uh, serious um, dilution of pax americana ek to belt and road initiative initiative there is no matching infrastructure initiative anywhere in the world whether it's world bank or or asian development bank they haven't such such a huge project and un, unlike the multilateral organizations jahan kahi governments hain jo control karti hain decision scope this is under the control of one single country and one single leader to jo bhi strategy hai कि जिस पेस पे करना चाहते हैं क्या करना चाहते हैं कहाँ जाना चाहते हैं देर नो डिस्कशन विद एनी बडी वायबिलिटी क्या है प्रोजेक्ट की ये है वो है नथिंग ऑफ द काइंड दे लुक एट द जियो पोलिटिकल इंटरेस्ट भाई ये करना तो करेंगे तो इवन इन बैंक कंपनी लाइक पाकिस्तान सी पी ई सी कर दिया सिक्सटी सिक्सटी फाइव बिलियन डॉलर कहते हैं हम वहाँ इन्वेस्ट करेंगे तो और दूसरा साउथ चाइना सी 
आपने ठीक कहा कि क्राइमिया के बारे में इन्होंने क्या किया चलो क्राइमिया में तब भी जस्टिफिकेशन थी रशिया की साउथ चाइना सी में क्या जस्टिफिकेशन है वो कहते हैं कि नहीं जी आवर आवर नथिंग नया प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इंटरनेशनल लॉ लगा दिया कि जो हमारे एंसेस्टर ने हमें बिकीत किया है तो वो तो हमारा है अमेरिका कुंड डू एनी थिंग इन दी साउथ चाइना सी इवन टूडे दे नॉट बीन एबल टू डू इट अब देखिए क्या है बिकॉज ऑफ रशिया दे आर अपीलिंग टू चाइना प्लीज आई मीन यू नो डोंट सपोर्ट द रशिया फुली अब तो हंसते होंगे चाइनीज तो ये क्या हो रहा है हमें तो ये कहते थे वी आर योर प्रिंसिपल एनिमी तो आप हमारे पास आ रहे हैं कि भाई आप रूस को पूरा मत सपोर्ट कीजिए सो इवन इफ द चाइनीज वांट टू अबलाइज देम हियर एंड देयर दे विल एक्सट्रैक्ट अ प्राइस तो ये क्या जियोपॉलिटिक्स है आई थिंक इट्स अ फनी जियोपॉलिटिक्स रियली मुझे बड़ा अजीब लगता है कि आपने आपके थिंक टैंक्स ने आई थिंक लास्ट 6 7 इयर्स दे हैव बीन सेइंग दैट चाइना इज द प्रिंसिपल एडवर्सरी कि चाइना जो है वो उनका सबसे बड़ा कंपटीटर है उसी से उनकी सारी प्रतियोगिता है जियोपॉलिटिक्स में और उसके बाद भी रशिया से रिलेशन नॉर्मलाइज करने के बजाय वो ऐसी पॉलिसीज फॉलो कर रहे हैं जिसमें रशिया और चाइना एक हो जाए और न केवल रशिया और चाइना एक हो जाए इंडिया को भी ये सोचना पड़ रहा है कि भई ये यूएस के साथ रहें या किसी तरह से रशिया को करके चाइना को मैनेज करें और इंडिया रशिया चाइना का ब्लॉक कहीं बन जाए फ्यूचर में तो उसके लिए भी यूएस को ही क्रेडिट देना पड़ेगा तो ऐसा है कि देखिए जब ये फूको यामा की आपने जिक्र किया उसके बाद जब फेज ऑफ यूएस यूनिटरिज्म हम देख रहे थे रिजीम चेंजेस इराक की वॉर ये वो तो उस समय जो प्रेमा कॉप जो प्राइम मिनिस्टर थे रशिया के उन्होंने सोचा और गलत नहीं सोचा कि भाई ये तो कुछ हमें मल्टीपोलर वर्ल्ड बनाना पड़ेगा और उसकी शुरुआत इंडिया चाइना रशिया मिलकर कर सकते हैं उस समय इफ यू रिकॉल इवन फ्रांस में काफी शोर था कि ये हाइपर पावर बन गई है और वो भी ओपनली सपोर्ट कर रहे थे यूनिपोलैरिटी को मल्टीपोलैरिटी को उस समय मैं बेस्टर था फ्रांस में तो वी व पार्ट ऑफ दैट फिर इन्होंने कहा कि भाई इसको ब्रॉडन कीजिए तो उसको ब्राजील को ले आए सो दैट इट इज ट्रांस कॉन्टिनेंटल नॉट ओनली एशियन और यूरेशियन फिर चाइना ने कहा कि भाई ब्राजील को ले आया है ले आए तो चलो साउथ अफ्रीका को भी हम ले आते हैं क्योंकि देर बिगेस्ट पार्टनर इन अफ्रीका है साउथ अफ्रीका तो साउथ अफ्रीका को ले आए तो इसलिए बिकेम इवन मोर ट्रांस कॉन्टिनेंटल it was all directed at us unilateralism uh to ab phir seo banaya unhone so shanghai cooperation organization jisme eventually india aur pakistan ko bhi member bana liya aur central asian states to hai hi hain to isme bhi is organization is group mein bhi west nahi hai jaise brics mein west nahi hai isme bhi west nahi hai so this was another forum uh, which was which was created or india joined these uh, because he, india has always supported theoretically multipolarity and at that time you break through aaya india us relationship mein wo nahi tha ye to 2005 ya 2008 ke baad hi aaya hai aur uh, ab aisi sthiti hai ke if, if you look really at reality the most wide ranging and uh, uh, and productive relationship in various fields that we have today is with the united states of america and then 45 billion dollars of bilateral uh, trade and uh, in goods and services uh, the biggest source of uh, uh, technology uh, look the uh, biggest investor in, in india uh, but now of course there is a very uh, there is a growing defense relationship in critical areas 
uh, there are 200,000 Indian students in the United States, unparalleled with any other country. There's so much uh, people to people uh, ties, uh, so much that is going on in so many fields, uh, uh, technology, uh, green energy, agriculture, uh, data, uh, you know, there's so much uh, uh, interaction with the United States of the kind we don't have with any other country. So now we have a challenge that when in this situation, when Rus and China are so much conflict and growing, then what do we do? Now we are a United Nations Security Council, unfortunately, at this point in time. So we can't stop. We can't stop. We can't stop. If we don't stop, we can't stop. So I think that the government of India, frankly, has handled it extremely well. Uh, subdued, uh, not uh, taking uh, overt positions against one or in favor of another. Yet, if you read the text of our statements, implicitly, uh, there is a reservation about what Russia has done. And you can read it as, uh, as you know, sub negative in a subdued manner. And the Russians are quite happy with this because this they rightly feel that India is pursuing an independent foreign policy and they're quite happy if you are neutral because they know they're realist, realist that uh, we have to manage our ties with the United States. Uh, but United States may uh, mentality is that you know, either you are with us or you are against us. So even they take our abstention as some kind of a opposition to the United States. I mean, point is we have a strategic partnership. Well, what does that mean? Which means that where our interests converge, we should support each other fully. Where our interests do not converge, we should accept differences, but on issue, but do, do nothing which will hurt the strategic interests of the other party or the security interests of another party. So how does our abstention hurt the security interests of the United States? Whereas our condemnation hurts our security interests with Russia. With 60, 70 percent of our forces still dependent on uh, Russian services and spare parts, or China sitting on our <laughs> on our head in Ladakh, Agar, if they delay this the supply of spare parts and this and that, then what will we do? So, okay. Okay. so there are costs to us of security which are serious. Or uh, new projects are S400, these are all disrupted. So. America should understand this. Government, I think, is showing some understanding, frankly, of the United States. But they are think tanks and experts and uh, press. <laughs> so we have to see uh, how we are going to handle it. It's a challenge. Uh, actually, if you really look at uh, the United States, it's a champion. Hai. Hello? You are in the distortion of your distortion. हेलो 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 अभी क्लियर है नहीं नहीं हेलो 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 नहीं 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 इट टोटली गाबल्ड हेलो अब ठीक है आप एक बार दोबारा ज्वाइन कर ले एग्जिट करके हेलो दी साउंड इज टोटली इट इज कमिंग आउट एज ग्राउस आई वुड हैव थॉट दैट आई वाज इन दी काना पार्क एंड आई वाज हेयरिंग अ टाइगर जस्ट कॉलिंग यू
थोड़ा सा इंटरनेट की प्रॉब्लम है तो अभी एक मिनट में वापस हम सिबल साहब को लेते हैं तो अभी आपने सुन लिया कि पूरी तरह से जो यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका है उसको ही सिबल साहब दोषी मान रहे हैं और ये काम जो है ये आज से नहीं ये पिछले तीस एक साल से यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका करता आ रहा है और करते करते उसने खुद ने अपने लिए गड्ढा खोद लिया चीन के साथ इकोनॉमिक रिलेशनशिप इतनी बढ़ा ली और वो भी जो उनके इकोनॉमिक इंटरेस्ट फाइनेंशियल इंटरेस्ट जो वॉल स्ट्रीट के और उनके कॉरपोरेशन के थे उनके कारण और उसी से उसने जो अपनी डोमिनेशन थी वो कॉम्प्रोमाइज़ कर ली और उसके बाद भी जब ये होने लगा कि रशिया उनसे बाहर जा रहा है हेलो 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 अभी भी क्लियर नहीं आ रही चलाए एग्जिट अगेन एंड ट्राई अगेन लेट मी आपको बिल्कुल आवाज नहीं सुनाई पड़ रही हेलो 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 अपने को भी इंटरनेट कनेक्शन की प्रॉब्लम है वो हो जाती है कई बार इस तरह के डायलॉग्स में और डेफिनेटली विल ट्राई टू रिट्रीव इट हेलो सर हेलो या आई कैन हियर यू नाउ हाँ ओके That is great. Then I will not. Okay, let me see if I can hear you now. Hello. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, we were talking about uh, um, uh, America diluting uh, uh, its own Pax Americana by getting China into it. 
तो इसमें मेरा जो अगला सवाल ये है कि ये जो पूरा का पूरा इनका जो स्ट्रक्चर है थिंक टैंक्स का और इनके प्रेस का और सब वो बातें तो वो करता है फ्री स्पीच और फ्री मार्केट और फ्रीडम ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स इंडिविजुअल राइट्स ये सारी बातें तो ये करता है लेकिन जब हम प्रैक्टिकली देखते हैं तो हम देखते हैं कि वो इस वक्त क्या कर रहा है यहाँ तक कि जब हम यूक्रेन के बारे में व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग इवन ऑन द यूट्यूब मेरा एक टॉक था यूक्रेन के बारे में वे वर वी आर ट्राइंग टू वी वर क्रिटिसाइजिंग द वेस्ट वॉज टेकन ऑफ बाद में बड़ी मुश्किल से वो रिस्टोर हुआ आई मीन दिस इज द एक्सटेंट ऑफ फ्री स्पीच दैट दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट और अभी तो जो ऑर्डनरी सिटीजन है उनको भी कैंसिल किया जा रहा है वैसे भी कैंसिल कल्चर आप जानते हैं क्या है तो वॉट काइंड ऑफ इंटरनेशनल डेमोक्रेसी दैट दे टॉक अबाउट कि डेमोक्रेटिक वैल्यू दे टॉक अबाउट मेरे हिसाब से तो इट्स कम्प्लीटली होक्स एंड जस्ट जैसे वो कहते हैं कि इट इज इम्पीरियलिज्म थ्रू अदर मेथड डेमोक्रेसी ह्यूमन राइट्स लिबरल वैल्यूज ये सारे की सारी जो हैं वो पूरी दुनिया पर हेजिमनी कायम करने के लिए उपयोग में लाई जा रही हैं नहीं बिल्कुल ठीक कहा आपने क्योंकि ये जो डबल स्टैंडर्ड्स की बात है तो बड़ी देर से कई देश ये कहते हैं कि आप आपके स्टैंडर्ड्स डबल स्टैंडर्ड्स हैं जब ह्यूमन राइट्स की बात आती है तो आपके जो दो, दोस्त हैं उनके ऊपर तो आपका कोई नुकताचीनी नहीं होती जो एडवर्सरीज हैं उनको आप पकड़ लेते हैं और सबसे जो मुझे दुख होता है फ्रेंकली वो ये है कि इंडिया की जो डेमोक्रेसी है उसके लिए इनके पास कोई रिस्पेक्ट नहीं है मैं गवर्नमेंट लेवल की बात नहीं कर रहा गवर्नमेंट लेवल पे तो डिस्कोर्स उनका अक्सर ठीक ही है और कुछ हद तक ठीक भी नहीं क्योंकि स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट कहता रहता है कि नहीं वी आर वाचिंग इट वेरी केयरफुली एज फ्रेंड्स वी विल रेज दिस इशू विद देम बट द आइडिया इज दैट वील कंटिन्यू टू लेक्चर यू एंड जो हमारे uh, वो जो फ्रीडम हाउस है या वो जो 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 कमीशन है फॉर इंटरनेशनल रिलीजियस फ्रीडम्स ऑल फंडेड बाय द स्टेट डिपार्टमेंट वो लगी हुई है हमें क्रिटिसाइज करने सो इनडायरेक्टली तो दी ऑफिशियल एस्टेब्लिशमेंट भी हमें प्रेशर डाल रहे हैं ऐसी बात नहीं है लेकिन तब भी जब लिंकन यहाँ आया था तो जब उसको स्पष्ट रूप से लोगों ने प्रश्न पूछे तो उसने काफी अक्लमंदी से इसको हैंडल किया और ये भी उसने एक्सेप्ट कर लिया कि भाई अमेरिका में भी बहुत कमी हैं तो हमें अपना अपने बारे में भी सोचना चाहिए लेकिन हम दो दोस्त हैं तो जो हमारे कंसर्न हैं हम रेज कर सकते हैं तो इस इस तरीके से उसने अपनी जो लॉबीज हैं इंडिया में उसको भी सेटिस्फाई कर लिया क्योंकि ये कहना कि हमारी भी प्रॉब्लम है दैट इज परफेक्टली ओके बिकॉज बाइडन की जो इनगरल स्पीच थी आप पढ़िए तो सारा ही यही था कि इंडियन डेमोक्रेसी इज एन्यूज प्रॉब्लम फेसिंग ह्यूज प्रॉब्लम रेसिज्म है ये है वो है अभी भी स्टेट ऑफ द यूनियन एड्रेस में उन्होंने गन गन रनिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ये वो कई बातें कही स्पेशली गन कल्चर एंड एवरीथिंग एल्स और रेसिज्म की फिर बात की तो uh, एक तो ये ह्यूमन राइट्स की जो इशू है डबल स्टैंडर्ड है रिलीजियस फ्रीडम की भी डबल स्टैंडर्ड है अब ये यूक्रेन के विषय में देखिए अब जो रशिया टुडे है उसको बैन कर दिया स्पुटनिंग न्यूज को बैन कर दिया अब अच्छा रशिया टुडे तो मैं देखता रहता हूँ और मैं वैसे इन ऑल ऑब्जेक्टिविटी कहना चाहता हूँ दैट इज अ वेरी गुड चैनल वेरी गुड चैनल लेकिन उसको बैन कर दिया क्योंकि वो कोई डिसेंटिंग वॉइस डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ओपिनियन वो अपनी पब्लिक को एक्सपोज नहीं करना चाहते और हैज टू बी अ सिंगल नैरेटिव वो नैरेटिव को पूरा कंट्रोल करते करना चाहते हैं तो इस सिलसिले में मैं आप मैं ये मौका उठाना चाहता हूँ ये कहने के लिए कि आई एम वेरी वेरी डिसअपॉइंटेड Uh, with our own uh, channels and our newspapers uh, they are treating the ukraine war as if it, russia has attacked india with any emotional outpouring of sympathy aur jo unka version hai wahi present kar rahe hain aur itne ukrainian members of parliament ye wo ye wo aate hain hamare tv channels pe itni gaali russia ko dete hain aur hamare anchor bhi saath unka karte hain jab maine kuch protest kiya yahan wahan तो अब वो उन्होंने रशियंस को बुलाना भी शुरू कर दिया है लेकिन आपने ये देखा होगा 
और दर्शकों ने देखा होगा कि ये यूक्रेनियन सब अच्छी इंग्लिश बोलते हैं और रशियन नहीं बोलते तो, <laughs> तो, तो उनकी प्रेजेंटेशन इज वेरी पुअर अब इसका कारण शायद लोगों को मालूम नहीं है क्या है क्योंकि मोस्ट ऑफ दिस पीपल एंड आई एम नॉट एग्जेसिंग एज आई अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम रिलायबल सोर्स मोस्ट ऑफ दिस पीपल आर डबल नेशनल दे आर अमेरिकन हु आर ऑल्सो यूक्रेनियंस फिफ्टी परसेंट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ दी मेंबर्स ऑफ यूक्रेनियन पार्लियामेंट आर डबल नेशनल दे आर अमेरिकन नाइंटी एट परसेंट ऑफ द यूके पार्लियामेंटेरियन स्पीक इंग्लिश ओनली फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द रशियन डूमा स्पीक इंग्लिश तो अब जो हमारे पेपर्स हैं उसमें सारे वो देखो न्यूज एजेंसीज रॉयटर्स ए पी ये वो ये वो स्टेटमेंट बाय गवर्नमेंट्स ऑफ वेरियस कंट्रीज तो सारी एजेंसीज और सोशल मीडिया के थ्रू जो पिक्चर्स आती हैं वो हम हमारी टेलीविजन इस इस डिस्प्लेंगे तो इन्होंने पूरा नेरेटिव को कंट्रोल कर लिया है उसमें भी डबल स्टैंडर्ड है इसमें भी डबल स्टैंडर्ड है क्योंकि फिर फ्रीडम ऑफ स्पीच कहाँ गई एंड वी आर पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन दैट सेपरेट मैटर दूसरा इनका जो है कि जो हम जो हम करना चाहते हैं हम करेंगे दैट इज लीगल डिफेंसिबल इज फॉर द गुड ऑफ द अदर पीपल इन अदर कंट्रीज बट इफ द सेम थिंग इज डन बाय सम अदर कंट्रीज इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ अटोक्रेसी एंड क्रिमिनल कॉन्डक्ट एंड वायलेशन ऑफ दिस एंड वायलेशन ऑफ दैट और ये बड़ा स्ट्रॉन्ग डिस्कोर्स इतना स्ट्रॉन्ग डिस्कोर्स है इन देशों में इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर पीपल टू डिस मेनी पीपल टेल मी दैट इन यूरोप Uh, especially and in United States, uh, United States is, uh, have people who are dissenting a little more, not in the uh, congressional circles or official circles here and there, but there are voices there. But Europe, me, to itna group think hai ke koi agar Putin ke baare me kuch achhi baat karna chahe, ja or just talk common sense, uh, say that you know we should look at his point of view. This is not acceptable. This is socially, politically, not acceptable. तो इसलिए वॉट यू सी टूडे वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन यूरोप डिमोनाइजेशन ऑफ फूड इन स्टार्टेड लॉन्ग टाइम अगो बट इट हैज रीच पिच लेवल्स पिच लेवल्स टूडे सो इन अदर वर्ड्स जो आप कह रहे थे बिल्कुल ठीक कह रहे थे कि देर आर दीज डबल स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड वन यार स्टिक फॉर दम सेल्व अनदर यार स्टिक फॉर अदर्स एंड फ्रीडम ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन Uh, being curtailed and curved when it uh, suits them. For example, जब हम कश्मीर में we want we put some little uh, uh, curbs on the internet, uh, this and that. You remember the kind yes, of yes. statement oh, that oh, came even of... for even from the State Department. और अब इन्होंने आर्टि को बैन कर दिया ये कर दिया वो कर दिया सोशल मीडिया में अब देखिए you may just mentioned YouTube. अब what is actually astonishing two things. Uh, one is that uh, now Meta uh, has uh, said that uh, they will not uh, follow their normal procedures and will allow posts which call for the killing of Russians, uh, which now the United States has uh, uh, Russia has said that they were going to uh, uh, declare Meta a terrorist organization because it's, it's, it's actually a it's, it's a violation of a UN resolution. I forget the. Uh, number of the resolution is a violation of the U.S. resolution, as is a violation of all these uh, mercenaries uh, who are being now <laughs> asked to go uh, and fight in Ukraine. But uh, leave that aside. And then uh, Lindsey Graham, U.S. senator, very respected uh, U.S. senator, and he openly calls for the assassination of Putin. And there's. There's no revulsion in uh, Europe or in America at a statement made like this. And if, let's say, a Russian, a Russian uh, senior member of the Russian Parliament who had international exposure uh, talked about assassinating <laughs> Biden, you would see the sense of horror that would spread in the entire Western world. So purely objectively, it it sort of hurts. Uh, uh, it hurts. It should hurt people that uh, uh, that, uh, that this kind of a uh, discourse is being normalized. 
normalized. It has serious repercussions and India must look ahead and see what it must do in the future uh, to protect its interests. Now, see, that private property, ko, without any due process of law, they are confiscating. Are, if some Russian oligarch has a yacht, uh, by what right are you, <laughs> are you confiscating it? Uh, there is a due process of law when you take over property of anyone. But he is doing it. Because he is associated with Putin, so what does, is, is it a crime in international law if you are associated with a political leader? You must prove that there's some wrongdoing that has been committed. And the same oligarchs have been welcomed, for example, in London and elsewhere in Europe. Now, uh, the North, North Stream Pipeline, hai, number two, has been banned. Then, this whole process of globalization, interdependence, which was actually established and promoted by the United States, huh? they are reversing that. So when it suited their interests, they promoted it. When it doesn't suit their interests, they're reversing everything. Uh, and we are caught in a jam because the consequences of uh, this conflict are very serious for everyone, including us. Well, oil prices have risen phenomenally. They may go up even more. And it's just when the world was moving out of COVID and was seeing the signs of economic recovery, uh, you've had this, uh, uh, this situation where because of these sanctions, the working of the international system has been totally uh, disrupted. Uh, you know, China was accused kar rahe the, rightly that they are weaponizing uh, interdependence, they are weaponizing critical supply chains uh, uh, to their own benefit uh, for coercion. This is precisely, precisely what the United States and Europe are today doing. They weaponize finance, for example, in such a, such a draconian manner. Uh, in fact, President Biden saying in his uh, speech in uh, uh, the Union, State of the Union address to the U.S. Congress that Putin boasts that he has $30 billion of foreign exchange reserves. I have rendered them worthless. I mean, this. so you talked about double standards. Here they are. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I think that they're going to suppress a continent-sized country like Russia. तो मैं दर्शकों से अनुरोध करूंगा कि आपको जो सवाल पूछने हो वो आप पूछ चलें माय लास्ट क्वेश्चन टू यू सर वेयर डू यू सी द न्यू वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर गोइंग ये दुनिया जो है नई दुनिया ये किस तरफ जाएगी ये कंफ्यूज बहुत कंफ्यूजन है दी देखिए माय व्यू हैज बीन एंड आई बीन राइटिंग ऑन इट फ्रॉम इंडियाज पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू uh, there was never really a world order as such because we were suffering from that order. That order still excludes us uh, from uh, decision making on international governance, despite the fact we are one sixth of humanity. Uh, all the international political and financial institutions are still dominated by United States and, and Europe. We were subject for decades to sanctions strategic sanctions, nuclear, high technology, missiles, and everything else. Uh, the, so from our point of view, uh, we had no stake in this uh, order other than the fact that we had to live <laughs> under it and protect ourselves as best as we could. Uh, ab, even those elements of relative stability in the global order that existed uh, have been on the one hand destabilized by china uh, because of its expansionist policies and everything else and weaponizing uh, critical supply chains and whatever now even a bigger uh, damage has been done uh, to that uh, uh, so-called world order by united states uh, using its financial power uh, to destabilize uh, uh, the global uh, financial system because all countries are now constrained uh, to look for uh, how they're going to handle relationships, uh, relationship with a country like uh, Russia, which has swift system se bhi nikal diya. Uh, payments issues have become a, a problem. Uh, ab social media ko ye pura control kar rahe hain, and social media has become an act of uh, destabilization in the hands uh, of uh, the uh, tech giants. They are now deciding, as I just mentioned, 
<laughs> that they can they even allow posts which say kill the russians <laughs> that kind of a thing <laughs> so 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 tomorrow the same weapons can be used uh, against any other country including us uh, so the world is moving into more and more uh, disorder uh, with uh, uh, no sign of real multipolarity but multi confusion uh, as to where the power centers are and the challenges those to those power centers will come inevitably because all countries now would be uh, looking at the future for example ab we have countries have assets in the west in the us treasuries properties uh, bank accounts uh, including in the tax havens and everything else but they are all on paper as has been shown in the case of russia mind you it's a nuclear weapon country it can destroy the united states but it is no protection it has no protection that gives it no protection so therefore india feeling that by hum nuclear power ban gaye hain isme kuch nahi hai everything that we own you and i or anybody owns and if there is in the west is you don't own it tomorrow it can be just taken over without any recourse uh, so i think uh, ultimately ye kya hoga that uh, two kinds of financial systems will get set up one involving china and russia because they have developed their own swift like systems and payment systems and india since it has to maintain a relationship with china will be drawn uh, with russia uh, will be drawn into it uh, inevitably though of course we'll have a foot on each side but nevertheless ek to ye ho, ho jayega and with that of course a division of uh, power uh, in the world system will be the west against the rest with a country like india uh, trying to manage uh, both sides and having a foot <laughs> on in each okay. camp it will be a very difficult difficult exercise but we have we have no choice we have we, we have no choice right right uh, i think uh, i have uh, one or two questions for you sir uh, this is aviral sure. pundir shouldn't eu prioritize better relationship with russia because of usa aggressions europe suffers can you, you eu isolate usa for europe no in fact uh, did you see that the uh, chancellor scholz was in the white house standing next to biden and a question was asked about nord stream 2 what did biden say uh, i'll i'll end the nord stream 2 i promise and the chancellor of germany the third largest uh, economy in the world standing next to him and he couldn't say anything But people don't forget people shouldn't forget that uh, there are there are us forces still stationed in germany uh and now germany against his wishes i think it was following an honorable course that we will not allow uh german weapons uh to go to russia through estonia or directly reason being that uh, the memories of the nazi invasion of germany of russia with 27 million russians who died is very very sensitive for the uh, germans and much more for the russians so now to arm the ukrainians against the russians to my mind is a major step that uh, germany has taken uh and it's taken under us pressure and who are the which are the countries which are most gung ho on nato and united states increasing its presence and 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 its security cover baltic states poland uh, czech republic they are the most and britain most vocal so it's not only us uh, in fact trump had one time as you recall <laughs> he wanted he said nato is uh, passe it has outlived its utility these uh, these uh, europeans are not spending enough for on the on their own defense they're depending on us they're putting a huge burden on us they must at least raise their defense expenditure to 2% if not 5% and today sweden has said we'll increase it to 2% germany says we'll increase it to 2% one or two other countries finland says we'll increase it to 2% so uh, the the europeans are in some sense puppets in the hand of the united states because Uh, they don't really have the kind of military power uh, that uh, the united states has because it's a single country uh, possessing new possessing uh, uh, 
possessing uh, uh, military power. Whereas Europe uh, has not been able to agree on a uh, on a firm common foreign and security policy and a centralized defense uh, kind of a force. They had this project of a rapid reaction force. It has not taken off. Uh, and even when France intervened in Mali, uh, they didn't have the transport capacity to actually uh, do that uh, to 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 uh, support their intervention. And they asked for NATO's help, which means U.S. help, which was given. So there are limits to what uh, Europe can do. So the answer to your question is that uh, Europe today, in fact, has become uh, much more subservient uh, to the the United States and the United States has fully used the Ukraine crisis to uh, ensure that. Right. Chitej, uh, uh, greetings to Ambassador, sir. Quad being purposely downplayed or it is weak under Biden's leadership, can Quad Plus be created to effectively take on China? You see, although the Western discourse, uh, U.S. discourse still is that uh, uh, Quad is, uh, remains very important and there will be no impact on the U.S. commitment to Quad uh, and that the challenge to China uh, will not be uh, or the attention to the challenge from China uh, will remain as focused as before. But the reality is that uh, United States can't be engaged realistically in a conflict on both ends of the Eurasian continent, you know, on the West with Russia and on the East with China. They don't have the capacity and they admitted they didn't have the capacity. They've been saying for some time that U.S. alone cannot handle all this. So they, they want to strengthen their alliances. If you recall before uh, Blinken met Yang Cheche, in Alaska, the Chinese counterpart. Uh, he first visited all the alliance members in, in the Western Pacific and in Europe and said publicly that this was intended to send a signal to the Chinese that the United States is not alone. US and allies are together in this. Now, if that was a confession of a relative weakness in terms of taking on China and the need to build alliances, so I can't understand how in, a, in, a, in two conflicts across two ends of the Eurasian continent, uh, they can uh, uh, they can handle it. Therefore, uh, willy-nilly, there will be less accent on uh, Quad, I think. Uh, although the other programs of Quad, which do not deal with security, uh, vaccines, even that might get disrupted because of economic dislocation, frankly. But nevertheless, uh, critical technologies, and climate change uh, and uh, cyber security and things like that. Uh, those, that agenda will continue to be developed and superficially, uh, well, not superficially, but uh, uh, the summits and everything else, uh, it's various levels uh, at the foreign minister level or at the, uh, at the leaders level could be held. But, uh, but there is no way, especially if the Ukraine situation continues to deteriorate as it will, that they'll be able to devote uh, sufficient attention. Last point, the, Atlantis, the Atlanticists in the US policy making establishment in this administration in particular are very strong, very strong. And although they may see the merits of uh, Quad and everything else, uh, their, their deep felt commitment uh, to the Quad is not as much as their deep felt commitment to NATO and the, and the Russian challenge. Quite right, sir. I think uh, uh, Xi Jinping, if he really wants Taiwan, then this would be the time for him to go. But it's a little hai na that uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia are contiguous. But uh, there is uh, 180 miles or whatever it is of sea. And amphibious operation is not easy at all. If you remember, uh, in 1965, we had the problem even of the Chogil Canal which are probably only 20 or 30 feet wide. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, military operations in, in that scenario are very, very difficult, very difficult. So, uh, and then they'll have to kill a lot of Taiwanese through air operations and everything else to suppress them. 
I don't think Xi Jinping will uh, take a chance. Though, though, mind you, he would have, he would be looking very, very carefully at what is happening on the Russia front. What are the steps U.S. is taking? Uh, what are the vulnerabilities of Russia that the U.S. is exploiting? Uh, all these sanctions and everything else. And he will, I think, inevitably uh, pursue, uh, take steps and pursue policies which will shield him uh, from this kind of pressure as and when uh, he decides to act against Taiwan. He won't do it in a hurry, but he'll see how all this goes. Uh, right, what's uh, happening in Ukraine. <laughs> so that brings us to the end of this discussion. And before we end, uh, requesting everybody for support and the details are all there below on the screen. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you all the viewers. Jai Hind, Vande Mataram. Thank you very much. Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss